name is Joshua Ishaya, a regular host on the program Back to Farm. Today we'll be talking about okra farming. Abiscus esculentis is one of the most important vegetables grown in Nigeria. It is an annual crop grown mainly as fruit and leafy vegetables in both green and dry states and the tropics. The crop is used as soup thickener, which may also be served with rice and other food types. The fresh food is good source of vitamins, minerals, and plant proteins. According to the research, okra contains about 20% edible oil protein, why it's mulicate, why it's utilized for medicinal purposes. The mustard stem contains crude, and for paper industries and others. Today on the program, we'll be looking at how okra is really grown. So stay back and take a look. Okra. Abomocus escolentus belongs to a family of Malvasia and is polyphoidy in nature. There are 30 species on the genus Abomocus in the world and 4 in the new world. Out of them, Albumotius escolentus is the only species known to be cultivated extensively as commercial vegetable, being it a self-pollinated crop, occurrence out of crossing to an extent of 20% by of 20% by insect has made an often cross-pollinated crop. Being native of tropical Africa, it is widely cultivated in Nigeria. Okra is valued for its delicious taste fruits. It is the best source of iodine and calcium. Okra account for 60% of export of fresh vegetables, excluding potato, onions, and garlic. Okra is cultivated for its green, non-fibrous fruit or pods containing brown seeds. The fruits are harvested when immature and eaten as a vegetable. Okra fruits can be cooked in a variety of ways. The root and stems of okra are used for clarification of sugarcane juice from which sugar or brown sugar is prepared. Its ripe seeds are roasted, ground and used as a substitute for coffee in some countries. Mature fruit and stems containing crude fiber are used in the paper industry. Extra from the seeds of the okra is an alternative source for odile oil, edible oil. The greenish yellow edible oil has a pleasing taste and odor, and it's high in unsaturated fats, such as oilic acid and leonic acid. Okra provides an important source of vitamins, calcium, potassium, and other minerals, which are often lacking in the diets developing countries. Widely grown, distributed, and consumed, either fresh or in dried form. The crop is an annual vegetable grown from seed and is widely cultivated in the tropic for its fruit use as vegetable. In Africa, there is a great diversification of okra, with the most important production region in Ghana, Burkina Faso, and Nigeria. Okra is grown in all types of soil, traveling best in moist, friable, well manured soil. The production and economic importance of okra in Nigeria has rapidly increased in recent years, and the seasonal supply of this vegetable to a large extent determines how much of it has been consumed by the majority of the people. The total world population of okra is estimated at 6 million metric tons per year, and production in West Central Africa is estimated at 500,000. The 600,000 metric tons annually based on available consumption data. The West, the West and Central African region account for more than 75% of okra produced in Africa, but the average productivity in this region is as low as 2.5 per hectare, compared to East or 6.5 hectare and North Africa at 8.8 .8 hectare. Nigeria is the largest producer with 1.39 hectare, followed by Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, and others. Okra is a good source of vitamin A, B, and including minerals, especially iodine and amino acid found in the seeds, which compete favorable with those in poultry eggs and soybeans. The stem is useful as fiber, while the leaves are considered good cattle feed and are sometimes consumed by man. Research has reported that okra contains about 20% edible oil and protein while it, it mulch is utilized for medicinal purposes. Composition per 100 kg of edible portion of okra 
contains calories at 5.0 gram, calcium 66 milligram, moisture 88 gram, iron 35 milligram, carbon dioxide 6.4 gram, potassium 103 milligram, protein 1.9, magnesium 52.0 milligram, fat and copper 1.2 gram, riboflavin and minerals, phosphorus. Okra is said to be very useful against genital, urinary disorder, and chronic dysentery. Its medicinal value has also been reported in curing ulcers and relief from hemorrhoids. The improvement of soil fertility through the application of fertilizer has become an essential factor that enables the world to feed billions of people. Organic matter is compound fertilizer that contains one or more kinds of organic matter, and the ingredient may be animal or vegetable matter or a compost. Poultry manure has a fairly high nutrient composition when compared with other animal sources such as goat, pigs, and cattle manures. Poultry manure is widely recognized as soil conditioner for raising soil pH and exchangeable basis levels. Inorganic fertilizer is manufactured artificially and contains minerals or synthetic chemicals typically made up for petroleum or natural gas including phosphorus. Potassium and other trace elements often mined from the earth. The proper use of inorganic fertilizer can improve crop yield, soil, total nutrient content, and nutrient availability to plants. Fertilizer is one of the most important inputs contributing to crop production because it increases productivity and improves yield quantity and quality. The general low ambient soil nutrient content made the soil suitable for study of responses to fertilizer. Application of organic materials generally resulted in growth which compared favorably with MPK fertilizer alone. Soil productivity maintenance is major constant of tropical agriculture. Crop cultivation is usually moved between fields to utilize only fertile soil for some years without use of fertilizer. However, this cannot be sustained to meet increased demand of an increasing population. Tropical soil are adversely affected by suboptimal soil fertility and erosion causing deterioration of the nutrient status and changes in soil organism population. Production constraints of okra in Nigeria have been attributed to low input supply system, while green fruit yield in most instances have been relatively low. Even in cases where high yield cultivars have been grown, the inherently low fertility status of the soil, coupled with inadequate application of fertilizer, remain the principal limiting factor to okra production, especially in the savanna region of Nigeria. As a result of these constraints, yield of 2 to 3 tons of green fruit have been reported. The scarcity of inorganic manure associated with high cost has created a lot of problem in arable crop production in Nigeria. In the past, farmyard manure have been used to improve and supplement soil nutrients, but the advent of organic manure has reduced the use of organic manure by farmers as a source of plant nutrients and soil improvement because of its relative ease of application and quick results. A lot of these organic manure lie as waste in rural and urban centers. They are occasionally dumped around farmstead and source mills. The aim of this documentary work is to evaluate the effects of fertilizer and poultry manure on yield of okra. The experiment consisted of nine treatments and control of tree replication. The treatment include three levels of poultry manure and three levels of MPK fertilizer which were laid out in a complete randomized block design and replicated three times. The experiment plot considered four rows. Let's talk about how to successfully farm okra in Nigeria. As we said earlier on in the documentary, okra farming, also called okra farming, is one of the most profitable farming ventures you can do in Nigeria. Most, if not, all Nigerians eat okra. This type of vegetable is used in preparation of soups. It is not too difficult to be successful in okra farming. You just need to cultivate your okra crop 
scientifically farming is science and you should take it as a very serious business when you plant your okra crop like the average nigerian farmer you are likely to make little or no money from it now let's look at how to get started first of all you get a fertile farmland before you get a farmland for your okra farm you need to carry out a soil test the soil test will show the fertility of the soil it is also show the ph nutrients and microbial count of your soil ensure that your farm line is fertile if you cannot get a fertile farm line you can add manure microbial inoculants and fertilizers to the soil to make it fertile that takes us to the next step which is farm land preparation to make good money from okra farming you need to prepare your farmland farmland preparation involves felling of trees the stomping Chlorine, harrowing, and region. Your soil should be loose with no hard pans. Having ridges can be very beneficial to your okra crop. Mechanized farming preparation is faster and much more efficient than the use of manual labor, especially if your farmland is big. Now you install your drip irrigation. I would strongly advise you to use drip irrigation for your okra farm. With drip irrigation, you can farm all year round. This is called brain fed farming. Rain fed farming allows you to farm only when it is raining. During the raining season, prices of okra are always very low and you can experience glutes. This can lead to loss if you are not careful. With drip irrigation, you can apply fertilizers and other nutrients to your plants through the emitters of the drip tubs. This process is called fatigation. It can increase the yield of your crop by 40 to 200 percent in the right way with drip irrigation you can also significantly increase your okra plant density without any adverse effect you can buy your drip irrigation the next thing you need to do is get good okra seeds lots of okra seeds sold in nigeria expired and not feed for farming I advise you to get your seeds from accredited seed dealers Hybrid seeds generally perform better than open pollinated seed. However, you should plant the variety of okra eaten by the people around your farm. I know a number of farmers who planted varieties of okra Nigerians do not eat. Of course, the recorded losses. You can soak your okra seed in the solution of potassium cumate to increase germination rates, biofertilizers, and microbial inoculants to improve the germinate rate now buy other farm input your okra farm will need inputs like fertilizer pesticides herbicide you can use 100 percent organic inputs or inorganic inputs you can also use both organic and inorganic farm inputs ensure you buy your input from good input sellers what you need to do next is to recruit member of staff ensure you mechanize your farm processes as much as possible. You need to employ laborers and a farm manager. Most farm laborers in Nigeria are from the Republic of Benin. You can also employ people you live near your farm. Never make the mistake of employing those with B qualification without experience as your farm manager. And no farm managers who studied non agri courses and they're performing far better than those who advance degrees in agronomy. Experience is important in farming. The next step is weeding. Weeds can reduce your yield by as much as 98%. Weed also harbor pests and diseases. You should ensure that your farm is weed free. There are small mechanized weeders you can use to make weeding very easy for you. The next step is fertilization. If your okra farm is based on organic farming principles, you can use biofertilizers manual microbial inoculants and humids for inorganic farmers you can use fertilizers like mpk urea dab calcium nitrate and potassium nitrate biofertilizer from accredited dealers the next step application of pesticides this also depends on whether you are organic or inorganic okra farmer there are good organic pesticides and also good inorganic pesticides. You just need to decide on the products you want 
Muscle gun exercise are more effective for prevention. You must apply your pesticides according to the instructions. Also obey the pre-harvest in interval. Now, let's look at harvesting. Harvesting your okra every two to three days will help to increase the yield and the well-being of plants. The lane of harvest can lead to a significant dip in yield. Okra farming can make you smile to the bank if done in the right way. Now, let's look at the cost of okra farming per hectare. The cost of setting up a one hectare plantation of okra varies. Here they are. Rent one hectare farmland, 50,000. Clearing, plowing and harrowing, 45,000. Seed, 41,000. Planting, 11,000. Irrigation, 290,000 to 640. Fertilizer manual, 20,000 to 200,000 depending on soil fertility. Pest size, 22,000. Others, 90,000. Okra has huge potential for enhancing lively hues in urban and rural areas and to several stakeholders. It offers a possible route to prosperity for small-scale and large-scale producers alike and all those involved in the okra value chain including women producers and traders. The principal elements in okra, which contains 17% seeds, presence of FE and also has been reported, fresh pods are low in calories practically not quite high in fiber and have several valuable nutrients including about 30% of the recommended level of vitamin C. Like soybeans oil, okra seed oil is rich 60% to 70% in undersaturated fatty acids. West Africa okra, known as Guinean type, accounts for 5% of the total world population of okra, but it is a very important crop in tropical areas of Cote d'Ivoire Benin, Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, and Togo. These relatively newly identified amphipolyphoid species is known for possessing a gene pool of variation that may be useful to occur improvement of both temperature and tropical types. Acelia is gradually replacing common okra in the tropical humid region because of its better adaptation under humid zone. And tolerance to biotic stresses. Indeed, under very limited and erratic rainfall in Sudano Sahil, Elinus, Esculantos, as compared to a Sully, was preferred during early domestication in Asia. Acelia has been utilized as a resistance source to breed yellow vein mosaic virus system, common okra variety. The interspecific cross between a silica and a Esculantus is successful with the possibility of gene transfer, although the partial hybrid breakdown barrier must be overcome. The study on the geographical distribution and extent of natural outcrossing in Benin and Togo suggests that genetic integrity of these two species is not threatened. Although the region of West Africa has diverse genetic resources of indigenous crop species, these have not received sufficient effort for genetic improvement. It is okra for food, nutrition, and income security, not only in the West Africa, but also in East Africa and North Africa. and several regions of Asia, okra potential is an industrial crop also has been tested in the developed world. The development and use of resistant tolerance cultivars against major pests and their promotion is often a more rewarding and appropriate option for sustainability of smallholders. This is especially relevant in the developing and underdeveloped world, where farmers often do not have the capability to diagnose pests and have limited access to good quality pesticide. In addition, pesticide abuse leads to adverse impacts on human and environmental health there are increased support on the development of pesticide resistance and pests. Nevertheless, we fully recognize that resistance breeding and other management tactics based on agroecological approaches are complementary and should not be viewed or considered in isolation. It is not possible to extend the lease of pests chosen to be attacked through resistance breeding and genetic engineering, nor all biotic stresses to effective control via genetic pathways.
the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria ASCN coordinates the activities of research institutes and is responsible for supervision, regulation, coordination of research activities and programs of higher institutions in Nigeria. And Professor Hamid Sharmatusin's assumption as Executive Secretary of ARCN in April 2020 has solidified the transformation of agriculture in Nigeria through strategic and meaningful execution of research fundings for improvement of the agricultural sector. For grains, we have the parabolic solar dryers. These are specialized solar dryers used for drying agricultural produce such as whole grains, yam and cassava chips, fruits and vegetables more efficiently. It is made of a special material that concentrates the rays of the sun within the enclosure while eliminating harmful ultraviolet radiation. Products dried are free from contaminants and are hygienic. The parabolic shaped solar dryer is a need based technology because virtually when we travel all over the country, you will see by the roadside, you see people drying all sorts of agricultural produce. Some spread their own on beer ground, and by the time the vehicles are moving, they raise dust, the dust stay on the products. The reptiles will come. They will hit whatever they can hit, drop their, uh, their feces and their urine on it. And the owner comes in the evening to pack everything together and still eat that product. And the product has been contaminated and we feel this is not right. And it is part of our mandate to make sure that we set it right. And that is was what led to this, so that we can solve this problem at the grassroots level. Instead of drying by the roadside, drying on just bare ground, in their villages, when they have this at the, as a drying center, everybody in the community can bring their product there, spread on the tray, and they get it dry under hygienic condition that is covered. And the dryer also have another property to screen the ultraviolet ray of the sun, which is also uh, can cause hazard to human health. Since then, Professor Sharabutu has operated as visionary captain by restoring the council's glory with the first ever agricultural television and radio station in Nigeria with well-equipped studios parading state-of-the-art equipment. Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria also has a brand new electronic library to further promote research and visualizations of deep thoughts on agricultural development in Nigeria. The museum located in the Senator Abdullahi Adamu Center is an agricultural museum saddled with the responsibility of keeping records of agricultural fundings, discoveries, researches for continuity and history purposes. ARCN Promoting Agriculture From the findings and study Poultry manual and rabbit rune increased the production of okra significantly and identified as a better source of organic manure for okra production. The use of poultry manure and rabbit urine as organic manure will help soil organic matter status, nutrient availability, and good crop yield. They are cheap, easily accessible, available, and good alternative to organic production. Therefore, poultry manure and rabbit rune are highly recommended for commercial production of okra. 
On that note, we come to the end of this episode of the program, Back to Farm. My name remains Joshua Ishaya. Thanking you for being a part of it. Bye for now.